Imagine a young girl, Lady Ulanara, later known as Abahai, destined for the highest ranks of her time as Defei, a title that, while just shy of Empress, still packed a powerful punch. In the early Qing establishment, Nurhasai's reign hadn't yet formalized the labels of Emperor and Empress as we know them. So, when Lady Abahai became the great consort, she was basically the Empress in waiting, just without the official fanfare. Abahai was only 12 when her beauty caught the eye of Nurhasai, a fierce warlord with a plan to shake up China's power structure. Marrying into this new regime wasn't just about looks, though. Abahai quickly proved herself savvy enough to hold her own. Nurhasai was a whopping 31 years her senior and already making waves, uniting the Jurchen tribes, crushing rivals, and sending shivers down the Ming dynasty's spine. But Lady Abahai? She didn't start as his favorite. She earned her way up, securing her spot as Defei by the age of 15 after the previous consort's death. Abahai soon had Nurhasai wrapped around her finger. Well, as much as anyone could control a fiery warlord. She bore him three sons and became his most trusted companion. But as any consort worth her silk robe's nose, being the it girl in a palace filled with power-hungry rivals is no easy gig. With more than ten sons, all eyeing the throne like a dessert tray, Abahai had her work cut out for her. She knew the palace playbook. As a widow could marry her late husband's son to protect her children, she needed an ally who'd have her back if things got rough. Rumor had it she had her sights set on Nurhasai's eldest son, Daisan, for a little insurance alliance. But guess who wasn't having it? None other than Hong Taiji, the bitter, ambitious son whose mother had been dethroned as consort when Abahai rose. In true palace drama style, Hong Taiji didn't just stew in silence. He started spreading nasty rumors that Abahai was way too close to Daisan. Nurhasai, not one to tolerate scandal, especially when it could tarnish his own reputation, publicly accused her of stealing gold and jewels and banished her from court. But like a moth to the flame, he couldn't stay away for long. Soon enough, she was back in the palace, titles restored, and resuming her duties as Defei. When Nurhasai passed in 1626, though, Hong Taiji seized his moment. Now, he wasn't about to let Abahai stick around as a possible rival. Playing his final card, he claimed that Nurhasai's last wish was for Abahai to be buried alongside him. Real classy, right? In one ruthless move, Hong Taiji eliminated his political threat by forcing Abahai into a death sentence. Some say Lady Abahai was strangled. Others claim she chose to hang herself to avoid a worse fate. Either way, Hong Taiji erased her from history leaving no record of her influence, titles, or even existence. He posthumously honored his own mother as empress, further ensuring Abahai's erasure from the royal narrative. It wasn't until the reign of Emperor Xuanji, the third Qing emperor, that she was posthumously granted the title of Empress Sialu, securing her place in history. But Hong Taiji's hatred ensured that for much of history, she remained a ghost in the annals of the Qing dynasty, deliberately erased from its legacy.